there are kind of several, several reasons why they have expanded uh, a lot faster in Latin America. I think the, the, the two perhaps uh, crucial ones is one, the process of democratization, which has taken place in Latin America for a lot longer. Uh, and, and if you couple that with um, what Latin, American called, uh, Latin Americans call deuda social in Spanish, or social debt, um, the process of a structural adjustment in the 80s and 90s um, generated very adverse conditions as far as social indicators. Poverty increase, inequality increase, um, <clears throat> employments became very precarious, labour markets um, didn't work properly, especially in terms of protecting protecting workers. So that, that by the um, by the middle of the 90s and the end of the, um, and, and the end of the last century, uh, there was a real sense that Latin Americans had to address these social debts, these long-standing accumulated um, deficits in terms of social and economic indicators. Um, and and if, you, if you put that together with the process of democratization, uh, then that leads to a, an expansion of uh, um, anti-poverty transfer programs which are focused on sectors of the population which before did not have access to anything. There is really a way of incorporating them into both the economy and, and, and the social protection system. And in Africa, have they caught on in the same way? <coughs> in in Africa, the, the process of democratization has, it has been slower. Um, it, it is the very good news on it for the last 10 years, but it, it, it hasn't really um, uh, been as kind of strong and sustained as in Latin America. And of course, on the other hand, I don't, I don't see um, um, Africans um, calling for um, governments to address the, 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 social, the social debt. They don't seem to perceive it so, as social debt, in part because a structural adjustment uh, operated on, on, on conditions that were already pre-adverse for the majority of the population in Africa. So perhaps they don't have this sensitivity to the, to the social debt. Um, and if um, sort of surveys uh, of op opinion in, in Africa, for example, um, ask people what, um, what they think the state should do, and they have very low expectations of what the state could provide for them. Uh, whereas in Latin America, that, that, that is precisely the opposite, as you, as, as you saw in terms of the demonstrations in Brazil recently. There is a very strong sense that governments um, are the right uh, institution to address this uh, long-standing and accumulated social debt. Uh, you don't see in Africa people demonstrating uh, in support of social transfers or in support of improved health and education. So I think that is the difference. Try to understand the drivers of Brazil's success and how those might be applied successfully in Africa. So it's an ambitious project and uh, the end results are very uncertain and we're in the early stages. But I think what we can say at the moment is that there are certain features of Brazil's development process which appear to have parallels and potential applications in Africa. That's especially around issues like commodity export sector. It's around issues like uh, regional divergence. Uh, the fact that some regions of Brazil are extremely poor, others are extremely wealthy, that polarization um, one can find parallels to that in Africa. It's also the case that both Africa and Brazil are dominated by large river systems and large extents of tropical forests. So there's something about the terrain and even the soils where there are clear parallels. And of course, if we go back way long ago in geological time, the two are joined up, as you can see from the present day shape. So it seems a sort of silly, silly rather trivial point in some ways. But there is this you know, long um, historical association between the two. Um, and there, is, there are some social um, similarities between the two, and there are similarities in terms of the export base. Of course, there are huge differences, and we'll be focusing on those as well. But that's where this springs from, this project. Um, and it, it's a project which is funded by the UK's Department for International Development, DFID, and they, they see Brazil as having the potential to offer Africa some useful lessons. And if you think about Brazilian northeast, which is an arid area, a very poor area, it's been the subject of a lot of regional policies going back 50 and 60 years. And a certain amount has been learned from that experience uh, and then already applied in parts of Africa. Uh, and I think there's further potential to learn from what Brazil is doing as Brazil's social policies become more elaborate and more successful. I mean, 
uh, on the conditional cash transfer side, for example, um, this is clearly where some African countries have already uh, looked at what Brazil is doing and is starting to emulate that. Um, but I think there's further scope for that. But I mean, moving beyond that, I mean, we're talking about things like what kind of export sectors could African countries build based on what Brazil's done. I mean, for example, adding value to commodity exports, uh, biofuels, for example, um, even um, industrialization. I mean, there, there's, there certainly is some scope from the Brazilian experience, so it would appear, um, for successful competitive industrialization um, based on um, natural resource endowments. And I think you know, there are potential learning points there for a number of African economies and an unexplored potential. The South-to-South -south cooperation and, and policy collaboration <clears throat> is a really important um, a, a area which is developing as, as countries like Brazil, India, Mexico are, are developing their kind of uh, international development col collaboration agencies. Then that, I think, is going to become much more important. And you see also the, the, the impact of that at the level of the G20, uh, because uh, added to what uh, uh, Ed is, is, uh, is mentioned, Brazil is perceived um, internationally and um, for developing countries um, as, as having um, a, a kind of almost a representation quality in terms of the international organization and the international architecture. So that, that is uh, very important too. I mean, it's an interesting fact that Lula, for example, visited 30 different capitals in Africa during his two years, uh, two uh, administrations. So he, he, they, they really have taken that into consideration. Now there are practical issues, uh, practical developments too. Um, the um, Brazilian Agricultural Technology Agency, Embrapa, already has six uh, offices in African countries. Um, and um, 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 an Africa, um, Brazil-Africa uh, collaboration project on social protection has um, facilitated visits for, from a lot of policymakers in Africa to Brazil to uh, uh, see what, how social policies work in practice. And that has been extremely influential. Uh, but Brazil, Brazilians claim that uh, um, there is always an, an, an area of Brazil that can have similarities in terms of baseline conditions with uh, countries in Africa. Well, it's like so a continent. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. you, you have yeah. someone from Ghana, someone from Nigeria. Well, you, you can find municipalities in Brazil that have pretty similar conditions in terms of, in terms of capacity, for example. Uh, and that program has been very effective. As we embark on this, uh, on this project of looking at uh, the p potential lessons from a Brazilian development model for Africa, um, sort of economic conditions in, in Brazil in the last two years have really not looked that, that uh, fantastic. Um, growth has stalled a bit, uh, stagnated a bit. And of course you have the demonstrations. Um, what is, what is interesting and, and gives us some um, kind of optimism about the future uh, is, n number one, that the, the attitude that the government and, and, and politicians had to the demonstrations in Brazil. Um, it wasn't kind of to discount what, what people were saying, but to kind of incorporate their views on uh, what was going on. And in terms of the economy, uh, again, it, it seems that the, the conditions, uh, that the external conditions that have affected growth um, are, are really very short term. So it's probably that, it's very likely that uh, growth in the Brazilian economy will pick up again. And in yeah, fact, the recent years. evidence is that this is happening. Um, there has been a bit of a rebound in growth according to the latest figures. Um, but, you know, I think one of the experiences of recent economic history in Brazil is just how tied Brazilian growth is to the international commodity cycle on the one hand and the availability of foreign capital on the other. And of course, recently we've had this potential drying up of foreign capital with the end of quantitative easing. Of course, a couple of days ago, the Fed opted not to go down that route, but everyone expects that will happen soon. And the other thing, of course, is that commodity prices have softened um, and that's been tied in with the slowdown of growth in China. So I think one of the big problems Brazil faces, or the challenges it faces, is perhaps not to return to the past, where it underwent a series of boom and bust cycles based on fluctuations of the global commodity prices. Um, so to try to avoid that, what they did was to go through a process of industrialization in the 50s and 60s and 70s. That hit a crisis point in the 80s and 90s. 
um, there's subsequently been market and trade liberalization. But now Brazil, to some extent, is trying to reinvent that industrialization model to try to avoid the over-reliance on commodities exports. And that's, for example, why you've had special industrial policy measurements, uh, or measures, I should say, applied to the oil sector and applied to the automotive sector. And, and, and if I could add just one, one small kind of point. Um, Brazil has very good um, tax collection capacity. The, at the moment, they, they collect something like 34% of GDP in, in, in taxation which puts it at the level of uh, southern European countries, Portugal, Spain, that, that sort of level. So um, it, is, it is only natural that the expectations of, of the population in Brazil are that with that level of taxation, the basic services like education, health, housing, should really be comparable to the level of tax that they are paying.